It is the middle of a blizzard in the middle of the Mongolian desert, and Timothy Scott and Will Decker are armed only with a video camera, their backpacks, their Bibles, and a message that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. You know, God's kept us safe before, so we're not worried. And, uh, you know, it is a little concerning because the elements like this are, are much worse than a jungle because you can survive for three, four days in a jungle. This, you can't survive more than two hours. Night is setting in, and they are in real danger of freezing to death. It's insane how cold it is here. I mean, this is, you're like on the edge of a moon or something. Tim and Will are what you might call gonzo missionaries. Robot. They travel to some of the most remote and dangerous parts of the world. You just gotta get through this section, it's about 20 kilometers. Trying to convert people to Christianity. We can all pray together right now and Jesus will come and live inside of you. All the while producing a show called Travel the Road, which airs on Trinity Broadcasting Network. They have been close. stalked by lions in Ethiopia. Yeah, baby. and menaced by leeches in Borneo. They braved gunfire in Burundi, oh my gosh. navigated streets filled with gun-toting militias in Somalia, and fallen out of moving trucks in Sudan. They've eaten wild monkey, beef, and tried to eat a pungent tropical fruit called durian. <laughs> And I don't mean this in a judgmental way, but it's a crazy lifestyle. It is. It's, it's great. We, yeah. we love it. Why do you do it? Our whole desire is to uh, preach the gospel. And uh, the places we usually end up is areas that have never heard the gospel at all, that never had any contact with, you know, don't know the name of Jesus. Our peace is in Jesus. Our peace is in the Father. Our peace is bought by the blood of Jesus. From what we know in our heart and what we know that the message that we carry how could we not do it? You're doing this because you believe that if you don't show people the gospel, they're going to a bad place after they die, right? Certainly. Imagine a person who is, you know, all of these years cut off from the gospel or have never heard the message of the gospel. And, uh, you know, that's one thing that we find very important to be able to go out there and, uh, and share the word of God. Tim and Will's travels are completely funded by donations. As a young man, Tim actually planned on becoming a stockbroker until he says God told him to become a missionary. Will wasn't even a believer until the pair went on their first trip back in 1998. But that changed as they traveled through Papua New Guinea. I gave my life to the Lord and said, Lord, you know, come into my life, live in me, forgive me my sins, and uh, felt a total release when I prayed that, and that's, that was the beginning for us. Back in that snowstorm in Mongolia, Tim and Will finally find what they're looking for, a tent, or as they call it in the local language, a gur. Blessed gur. The Lord has once again provided, and uh, we're not, we're not going to die out here. Luckily, the family that owns the place is friendly. They even offer them hot soup. But shortly thereafter, their vodka-swilling Kazakh drivers decide not to let them go. The missionaries believe they've been kidnapped. Is it? Yeah, it's a buck knife. I don't like the fact that we're going out into the wilderness. I know. I mean, these guys got a buck knife by his side. And in a moment like that, you're thinking, truly, if this is my time, if God has chosen this moment to take me, I'm going to go. Other than that, I'm not going to pre get preoccupied. Certainly. And I mean, I mean, in that situation, we're not just like, you know, completely absolved of fear. You know, we're in there, we're like, oh, Lord, protect us, you know, keep <laughs> us, you know, right now. I mean, in, in that situation, and, and God did. So does that lead you to taking risks that you shouldn't take? No, it... Because it, you think you're wearing a coat of armor of faith? No, it leads us to, to have more faith. So Sergeant Hoyt is our man. He is like the ultimate soldier. Recently, one of Will and Tim's adventures created controversy. Right, so they embedded with the U.S. military in Afghanistan where they handed out Bibles to the locals. A group called the Military Religious Freedom Foundation pointed out that this appears to be a violation of the military's own rules. And the military has a rule that says no proselytizing in, in the theater of war. Of their active military, mm -hmm. you know, so like... Uh, if, but should they be helping people who are doing it? But are they helping? I mean, yeah. we're on base. Did they help us? They, they, did they didn't send a Blackhawk to, uh, you know, yeah. drop us in a village and <laughs> yeah. us, jump out and evangelize. 
When we contacted the U.S. Army, they said they no longer have the records of Tim and Will's embed. And the missionaries told us they were not accompanied by soldiers when they handed out those Bibles. <laughs> there are also larger concerns about Tim and Will's work. Critics say when missionaries evangelized to remote tribal groups, here the guys are preaching to nomadic reindeer tribes in Siberia, they risk destroying ancient culture. Because God has commissioned us to, to come here. Jesus really did come to the earth and die on the cross for our sins. You, you say you value the, the cultures of the world, but if, if you change people's religion, you're changing their culture. Not necessarily, you're changing, they're changing their beliefs of their heart. What we've come here today is to speak to you about Jesus. Jesus was real and that he lived 2,000 years ago. You're not changing what they, how they act or what they do or certain things. It's only certain things on their heart on what they well, believe in Well, I mean, if, you're, if, you, if, you, if you convince somebody who's a Muslim to believe in Jesus Christ, they're not gonna be praying five times a day to Allah. That's a pretty sure. big cultural change. Well, they yeah. They won't be doing Ramadan. Uh, of course, but that's, that's a religious change. When you have like certain cultures, if you want to tie in culture and religion together, then sure, yeah, that's, uh, you, you would say that's a change. But here's the one thing that we definitely believe. Everybody should have the freedom to choose what they believe in their own heart and to restrict anybody around the world to say, hey, you can't believe this or you can't do that. And that's where it can be very dangerous. Back once again to Mongolia, where Tim and Will are still being held by their drunken drivers. After nearly 24 hours in the car, they try to get off at a truck stop. The Kazakh men threaten. But finally, a police officer intervenes. I'll give you the money. Here. No. Despite numerous close calls like this one. These gonzo missionaries are undaunted. And then we're good to go. The day after our interview, they took off for South America with no return date. I believe it was John Wesley said, I am immortal on this earth until God decides to take me. For Nightline, this is Dan Harris in New York.